Welcome to another edition of Motor Rage How To. Today we're going to build on what we've learned so far. We're going to actually capture some live signals from our test vehicle. This is a 2013 Ram pickup equipped with a 5.7 liter V8. Specifically, I want to capture the crankshaft and camshaft position sensor signals. Stick around, I'll show you how next. If you're going to try to capture an electrical signal with your scope, it's really not that much different than if you're trying to do the same thing with your voltmeter. You've got to know where to place the leads, right, in order to get the signal that you're looking to get or the voltage measurement that you're looking to get. And in order to do that, you've got to reference the schematic for that circuit. So let's do that for this RAM pickups, camshaft position and crankshaft position sensor circuits. You see here, I've got the engine performance uh, pages laid out and I've identified where they are in the circuit on page four. Here we've got the camshaft position sensor and the crankshaft position sensor. Let's take a closer look first at the camshaft position sensor. Okay, it's a three wire sensor and they're labeled here on that block diagram for me. Sensor ground. Okay, that's not gonna give me the signal, is it? Five volt reference, well that's an interesting clue. Now I know that I'm gonna be dealing with a five volt uh, reference voltage on this sensor, that's the five volt supply, which means that my signal is probably gonna be around five volts, right? So that helps me with the voltage divisions that I wanna set up on my scope. And then last, camshaft position sensor signal. Well, it doesn't get any easier than that, does it? So let's take a moment and take a note of what the color wire we're dealing with for that one. This is a dark blue with a gray tracer and it's on pin number three in the connector. So that's gonna make it easy for us to identify on the truck. We've got that one down. Now let's move on to the camshaft or the crankshaft position sensor. Right next door on the diagram, again, three wires, five volt reference is the first one. Well, hey, same thing as the camshaft position. How I know where to set my voltage settings for that capture. Crank speed sensor output. Well, that's a likely candidate, but is that the only choice? Let's see, the third one says crankshaft position sensor return. Okay, well the sensor return, that's usually some type of ground path, isn't it? So I'm gonna go with crankshaft speed sensor output as the signal wire that I wanna connect my scope to. And let's see, that's going to be on brown wire with a light blue tracer. So now I've got the two wires identified, we'll make note of that. Now I need to know where is all this stuff located. So you can find that, of course, in your service information system. It turns out the camshaft position sensor is fairly easy to access, and I'll show you that on the truck. But if it's difficult, remember, I can go wherever it's the easiest. And in this case, the ECM is very easy to access. So can I go around and back probe on those pins to pick up these signals right where they connect to the ECM? Of course I can. So let's move on forward here. We can follow these wires back we get to the last page and you can see here's the ECM and specifically this is uh, connector two on the ECM and we'll just zoom in on that so you can see what I saw. And right here we got pin 85, the dark blue and gray wires, the camshaft position sensor signal. So I can go there and then I also have uh, brown and light blue at pin 86, the crank speed sensor output. So they're both right there. If I wanted to, I can just go ahead and back probe that connector. So let's go over to the truck and take a look at the practicalities of those and get our probes in place so that we can actually hook up the scope and get this pattern. Okay, I've already taken the liberty of removing the air box so that we can gain access to the ECM. And as you can see in these pictures, the, the ECM uh, is very accessible, which makes it a prime candidate for me to be able to access the signals that I'm looking for. Now, according to the schematics we just looked at, both of the signals that I'm looking to capture are, are based in connector number two. And I've already come up that uh, the, the connector on the left is connector number two, but I'm a little hesitant about uh, going in there to get both my signals. Why? Because the, the two are right next to each other in that block. And uh, it's possible when you're, especially when you're back probing a control module for your back probe to kind of get off course if you're not careful, you may end up in a pin that's adjacent to the one that you're trying to get into. And I don't want to take a chance that I corrupt the signal, I don't get a signal, uh, something else throws me off. Worst case, I end up shorting something I'm not supposed to short. You know, I, I just don't want to take that chance. So I'm going to just use the ECM block for the crankshaft position sensor signal, 
Why? Because that's the mo that's of the two, that's the hardest one for me to get to. Um, as I show you here in this picture, you can see the, the camshaft position sensor is right there in the front of the engine. Very easy. I'm staring right at it. It's very easy to get to, especially with that air box out of the way again. So I'm going to go there for the uh, CMP signal, and I'm going to go to the ECM for the crankshaft signal. Now, real quick, we did a video on the pros and cons of back probe and piercing. Uh, let me just say that, of course, we talked about maybe shorting something accidentally here, but there's also on, on some connectors the possibility to damage the weather seal as, as it is here on the front for the camshaft position sensor. Be very careful that when you place your back probe, you run right alongside that wiring's insulation and follow it straight into the pocket that you're trying to get to. Now, if you choose to pierce, that's fine. Nothing wrong with that. Just make sure that when you adjust your piercing tool, you're piercing it just enough to get the signal so that you avoid uh, any, any more damage to the wiring that is possible. And you seal the hole you made when you're done. Okay, so with those two things in mind, let's go ahead and, and start by setting up our signal for the ECM. Okay, so now here's a little closer view of the ECM. Connectors one, connector two. Uh, as we pointed out from the schematic, I gotta get into connector two to access that crankshaft position sensor signal. And I don't have to disconnect these in order to do that. Um, there's, if you look very closely, there's a wire tie here at the base. So we're just gonna cut that off. And then up here at the top, there's just a little tab. All I have to do is press the tab. And when I do that, as I've already kind of preset up here on this one, I can just lift the top of that connector right off the wiring and I can set that off to the side. Now, I gotta figure out which pin I need. Boy, there's a bunch of wires here, aren't there? In fact, there's 96 slots, if you will, in this connector. Uh, remember, we needed pin, what, 86. That's the one that we identified on our schematic. So which one is that? Well, my eyes aren't what they used to be, so what I'll do is I'll take a picture with my phone of that connector and then blow it up. And, and here, here you can see what that looks like. Notice that at the uh, top right, it's got a number 24 stamp there. And at the top left, it says 96. So the one at the top right, that's number 24. So the wires are running from the base up to 24. And then the next row, 25 up to 48 and so on until we get to 96. So that means I just have to count down from 96 down to what I'm looking for, 86 and then place my, my probe. So let's see if we, can, if we can do that. All right, and there's the first probe placed. Okay, now the um, camshaft position sensor is uh, even easier to get to. It's just right there at the very front of the engine. Uh, with everything out of the way, you can see that blue-gray wire very easily. We'll just take a probe, and again, we'll get it started in there. I'm going to go straight in as I can, avoiding any damage to the weather pack. And then once we're in place, now we can get our scope set up and connect the leads. Okay, now that we have the probes in place, it's time for me to connect the scope leads and set up the scope to get this capture. Now, uh, I have the first channel, the blue channel, is going to my crankshaft position sensor probe where we put the, at the back of the ECM, and my um, camshaft position sensor is channel number two, the red channel, that's going uh, right to the back of the CMP connector as we showed earlier. So let's talk about setting the basic channels based on what we've learned so far. Because of what I saw in the schematics, I'm expecting to see a voltage range of somewhere between zero and five volts, right? So let's start with that. I'm gonna go ahead and set the voltage scales on both to five volts. And we'll get that done. And the only problem is that the zero lines are, are lined up here, so I can't see the two separately. Now this allows me to, uh, this scope allows me to just kind of drop and drag. So I'm gonna bring channel two down a little bit. Uh, still a little bit of overlap, but we won't worry about that right now. So now I have two distinct lines. Now if you refer back to the MODIS and, and some others, the, they're actually on separate uh, traces there. They're separated so where you can see them a little easier to start with, but they're also able to be manipulated just like we showed you uh, a, a video or two ago. So I have my basic settings now for, for voltage. What about time? Well, 
I know things happen in milliseconds on this vehicle, right? But let's just, let's just kind of start from the top. Idle speed on this truck is right around 700 RPM. That means the camshaft is going to turn what? 350 RPM, right? Half. So I'm going to start off by just setting up to get one based on revolutions per minute, right? So I'm going to go ahead and set the time to uh, five seconds per division. And bear with me, you'll see why here as we go through this. So we'll set that at five seconds per division. And what I have now here is, is because I have 10 divisions, what's my total sweep? Not quite a minute, 50 seconds, right? So I'm a little shy of a minute. So again, that revolutions per minute kind of idea, right? So I know that I should be able to see 350, roughly, camshaft revolutions across this screen using the time base I got now. So at this point, I should be able to catch something. Let's start the truck up and see what happens. Okay, with the scope up and running, you can see that based on what my settings are so far, I've just got a bunch of smear on this screen. Now, if you're a Pico user, you know that I can do a lot with that smear, but I want to stress again, the whole idea behind this series of videos is to make it possible for any tech, no matter what scope you're using, to get a workable pattern on a single screen so that you can fix the car. So let's see what we can do about manipulating this one a little bit, just using the basic time and voltage settings. First of all, my voltage is kind of smeary, isn't it? I got a little bit going here, a little overlap. I want to separate those two. So even though I know I'm looking at a five volt signal, I'm going to up that time base so I can get a clear separation. We're just going to bump that up to 10 for each channel. And now I've got a good clear separation between the two. You know, that's something that I can see and something I can work with. What about the time factor? Okay, well, I have roughly a minute on the screen, right? Five seconds per division, 50 seconds total sweep. What if I cut that by 10? Well, instead of having 350 camshaft revolutions, I should get that down to 35, right? So we'll just drop that down from five seconds per division to half a second per division. Okay, we're getting close. At least now I have something that's getting closer to, to what I would expect to see. But I'm still seeing 35 of these, right? Well, let's cut it by 10 again and get that down to three and a half. And let's see what happens. So now we're gonna bring that down to 50 milliseconds per division. Half a second total sweep. Okay, now I got a pattern that I can use. Okay, to recap, we used the schematic to figure out where we needed to place our scope leads, very similar to how you figure it out if you're using a voltmeter, right? So not too much difference there. We uh, discussed briefly about back probing versus piercing. For more information, go back to the very first how-to, uh, a little more there for you on that topic. And then we hooked up our scope, we manipulated the time and voltage divisions to get a usable capture that we can see on a single screen. And again, now we have something that I can use to diagnose this truck. Now, how are we gonna do that? What are we gonna use that pattern for? Sorry, you're gonna have to wait till next time here on Motor Rage How To. Mm -hmm.